of the things I find most striking is the presence of Antarctica on ancient maps, because we didn't discover it until 1820. And yet it's on maps drawn in the 1500s with great detail. Imagine life growing and cultured in the most undefined and outlandish location. Now, scientists have asked that we put imagination away because this has been proven to be true as they have now discovered under ice and what lies in this hollow space is enough to drive anyone in shock. This video is sure to take us back to a time when Antarctica was lush and green, thriving in civilization and hospitable for human living. How long ago was this? And why are we just finding out that Antarctica was not always cold or at the South Pole? Is there solid geographical and global evidence to back up this claim? Join us as we reveal the horrid hidden secret and source of fear to the scientists. The story behind Antarctica, a mind-blowing discovery of an independent and fully functional ecosystem has been found in Antarctica, the city of ice and cold. Being very cold and low in temperature, Scientists have been known to evade going there to carry out research, and so it continues to conceal many obscene secrets. One of the secrets which the cold city holds is a vast expanse of hills and valleys, carved together by rivers and streams that lie underneath the ice and have seemingly been frozen in time. Hypothetically speaking, a flood or comet impact could have seemingly resulted in the heavy burial of this vast civilization's disappearance from historical records, having survival dispersed around the world left to tell the story of their vacated homes to other cultures, this playing a large role in shaping their culture. One country it is highly believed about is Egypt. Egyptians and Sumerians share somewhat similar architectural structures and astronomical alignments across different ancient sites, a proof of shared knowledge, suggesting an inheritance of advanced techniques, insight, and general wisdom. Proof of this claim is the discovery of techniques to do longitude that shows the world as it was before the Ice Age, showing that someone was mapping the world during the Ice Age. The implication of this is a challenge to the conventional timeline of history that view complex societies as recent, implying that this civilization existed before the last ice age, causing a reconsideration of the whole dating sequence on the megalithic sites around the world, which are jitmir stones or artifacts, but advanced knowledge of architecture, astronomy, and engineering. Precise alignments of these structures such as the alignment of the Great Pyramids with Orion's belt, or the solstices and equinoxes and stone hedge goes, show a refined understanding of the heavens, suggesting that the architects had a deep understanding of the heavenly bodies, seasons, and cycles. All these advanced knowledge points that its dissemination could have only come from survivors of the prehistoric society from whom later civilizations imitated to this day. From the Eocene epoch, Antarctica is seen to be vastly different from all that we know it to be now. Engulfed in ice, rather, it was bustling with life, occupying the same position as it does currently. Even at this time, the climate was warmer, allowing for the growth of life and vegetation. This brings to an end the controversy that Antarctica changed location. The tectonic effect during the Eocene was crucial in reshaping our world, including the breakup of Gondwana that persisted, along with the formation of the Drake Passage between Antarctica and South America, began to physically isolate the continent. This critical juncture in Antarctica's climatic history. Another developmental change that occurred was the formation of the Antarctic Circumpola Current towards the end of the Eocene or beginning of the Oligocene, causing the world's largest ocean current to settle in Antarctica, although the ACC played a vital role in the thermal isolation of the continent by circulating cold water. By doing this, there was the establishment of a climatic barrier that kept the warmer waters at bay, causing cooling and glaciation of Antarctica. Also, the presence of fossils is another evidence of past life in Antarctica, along with the higher sea levels due to the absence of ice caps. The elevated sea levels and warmer temperatures fostered a rich and diverse marine ecosystem separate from the current Antarctic marine life. Antarctica was not left behind in the age of mammals, 
where mammals took the stage after the exit of dinosaurs from our planet at the end of the Cretaceous period due to the Earth undergoing crucial geological, climatic, and biological shifts. At this point, tectonic plates were on the move toward their current positions, altering the oceans and climate in profound ways. Speaking of climate alteration, about 56 million years ago, there was a huge surge in temperature by 5 to 8 degrees Celsius on Earth. This event was likely caused by the release of methane from oceanic methane clathrates, and its effects were seen in the extinction of some species, as well as the triggering of the diversification of others, as was seen especially amongst mammals. Understanding what lies beneath the icy surface. A popular theory going about is the fact that some billionaires are up and about in a quest to uncover Antarctica's cold secrets. So far, these men have pointed to all that they can as supporting evidence, of which is the Piri Race map from 1513, related by the Ottoman and cartographer Piri Reis, which depicts Antarctica's coastline with remarkable accuracy long before it was even discovered in 1929, implying the possibility of its existence already being known by seafarers. Graham Hancock interpreted the Peary Race map, giving fascinating information, although only having about one-third of its entirety preserved. The scale of the map is quite inconsistent, as is common to early cartography, although including various annotations. Peary Race himself explained that the map was compiled using earlier sources, such as charts from Christopher Columbus and older maps that may have included Western and Eastern navigational charts. The Hancock interpretation focuses majorly on the Antarctic coastline in a largely ice-free state, significantly inferring that ancient seafarers might have charged Antarctica long before it was discovered. However, the controversies that follow say that this map might have been a misinterpretation of the South American coast or an imaginative act. Hancock also suggests that the map had mountain ranges in Antarctica and they lay under ice, not discovered until recently. Critics believe, however, that it could merely be a misdrawn coastline or symbolic representation. He also proposes that history as we know it is not complete and only a bit was managed to be preserved and passed down from generation to generation. Found in the cold city, are anomalies, some of which are images show expeditions which could only either be humans or aliens. Also the historic fact of Germany's expeditions to Antarctica, which some speculate to be a cover for establishing secret bases or contact with extraterrestrial technology under the guise of exploration and drilling. One of the conspiracy theories that many are likely to believe is Operation High Jump, which was led by Admiral Richard E. Byrd from 1946 to 1947, whose operation was tasked with research. Also known as the United States Navy Antarctic Development Program, explains a narrative that blends military precision with scientific curiosity. Some, however, believe that it was a disguised operation for the exploration of ancient ruins, aliens and alien bases, and these claims are backed up by the continuous and extended deployment of military personnel. These speculations were solidified by Byrd's comments in which he hinted at some extraordinary experiences. Aside from reports from Byrd and his team, some individuals have claimed to have not only been to Antarctica, but also to have made use of heavy technologies and interacted with extraterrestrial beings. Project High Jump was a scheme much more about the people than it was about the place, creating a legacy that eventually led to the Antarctic Treaty System. The whole project put together by the US government, but headed by Admiral Byrd, goes to show how far human curiosity can go, as well as the limitless drive to push beyond boundaries. There is no denying that the operation was informative and ambitious, hit its relevance lies in its contributions to our understanding of Antarctica. Nonetheless, an intriguing conspiracy theory concerning this project is that it was a secret mission embarked upon to uncover the German base that was hidden deep. 
In the late 1930s, Germany did embark on several trips to Antarctica, but there was no establishment of a permanent base. Theories say that they were also on a mission to hunt various minerals for their war machines or to seek out ancient knowledge. As the years went by, these speculations of the Germans making advanced weaponry far from the prying eyes of the world became famous in the month of as many. There have also been allegations of the government restricting these stories and restricting access to the Antarctic regions, thus suggesting a cover-up on all the unusual reports given over time. There is also the belief that Antarctica may be a hub for secret space programs as well as alien-human collaboration. This theory goes further to explain how billionaires throw millions into unearthing ancient, unused technology from a civilization beyond our world that has the possibility of revolutionizing our world. Such expeditions taken to unearth artifacts such as the Ark of the Covenant or the Holy Grail. Another fascinating speculation laid against Antarctica is an entrance into inner Earth, which goes to back up a claim that Earth has significant hollows or cavern systems capable of supporting life. This theory is not new, but taking its root in Antarctica would make it quite believable as some people have claimed that they have seen holes or caves with large openings possibly inhabited by advanced civilizations or extraterrestrial beings. Along with this, unexplained heat sources and electromagnetic readings have been recorded in Antarctica. A piece of Antarctic history the Denisova Cave. Archaeologists and historians have found a piece of history that has managed to capture their attention. The Denisova Cave in Siberia is not just any cave, but a housing of human evolution nestled in an area of biodiversity and complex geological history. The story of this cave was first unraveled in the 1970s when it was first explored by Soviet scientists, who at that time was set on unraveling the geological and paleontological mysteries of the cave. They had overlooked the cave's potential to unlock stories of ancient times. What exactly did the scientists discover? In the year 2008, the cave finally made its appearance into the spotlight when they found a small, pinky bone that belonged to Denisovans, an ancient group of hominini. But it was not just any cave, there it stood tucked away in the rugged terrains of the Alai Mountains, where the borders of China, Mongolia, and Russia meet and has captured the attention of scientists, and now the world has an interest in the cave. It is named after Dennis, an 18th century hermit who once called the cave home. This helps in adding a touch of human history to what now seems like a treasure trove of questions with its intricate network of galleries. Particularly peculiar about the cave is its location, as it is nestled in the mountains so hard to reach. The Homininians are far different from the Neanderthals whom they branched out of about 400,000 years ago, and we are unsure as to how they looked like during their existence. Interestingly, the Denisovans did not just keep to themselves, but some people in different regions carry their DNA, such as Asians and Oceanians, for instance, the indigenous people of Melanesia, including Papua and New Guineans, who have about 5% of their DNA, revealing a history of interbreeding that is more ancient and complex than we could imagine. Now we know that this species did not only mix with modern humans, but Neanderthals. It is possible that they also met other species, which we will also find out as more research is conducted. Although the cave has a lot of obstacles and disadvantages, these challenges make it a lot more intriguing for explorers. This discovery points out that we truly do not know the complete picture of our history, but with every small fraction, scientists piece it together with every small discovered fraction. Other results of explorations by researchers. The Siberia Yakutia region is known for its low temperature houses, the Valley of Death, which is tucked away in the northeastern part of Siberia in the Saka Republic, is a valley for mysteries that bug the mind, having huge ancient structures of unique features with very unfavorable conditions, which have made studying the area very hard. 
The intriguing feature of this valley is brought about by the curious metallic structures scattered around its landscape. Only getting to this valley is said to be a dangerous trip to undertake, causing grown men and skilled hikers or researchers reasons to back away. According to the locals around, its location is one of the only reasons for intrigue or danger. The folklore speaks that the structures are not ordinary and could wield powers that could make one sick. Although this would ordinarily scare anyone, this story is unverified. And regarding the existence of the structures, while scientists have theories that explain their existence or the remnant of meteorite impacts pointing to Siberia's history with celestial events like the famous Tunguska explosion, others speculate that they could be the work of past civilizations lost in time. The allure of discovering the secrets of Siberia is tempting, and as technology and experimental methods improve, more people would likely be willing to explore. But for now, it remains a form of enticing mystery. The Tunguska exploration that had shook not only the locals, but the world in general. In Siberia, sometime on June 30th, 1908, a blast of so loud and powerful sound, flattening about 18 million trees and reportedly 1,000 times more powerful than the Hiroshima atomic blast with its shock waves, fell about 2,000 kilometer away. Surprisingly, the resultant effect of the blast was not tied down to a big patch of knockdown trees alone, but was inclusive of environmental punch-boosting tree growth in the area and genetic mutations in both plants and animals due to the extreme heat and shock waves. A glaciologist, Professor Stuart Jameson of Durham University, explains that the cold city has an expanse of about 12,000 square miles and once bore plants, trees, and probably animals until the arrival of ice. Jameson calls the entire thing interesting and exciting because it had been in visible light the whole time, and the reason it was now discovered was not the use of new data, but a different approach and method. He went further to say that the land beneath the ice at the east of Antarctica is less known than the surface of Mars, explaining how less visited it is. The main way to explore beneath this ice sheet is through radio echo sounding, a mechanism that involves a plane flying overhead to send radio waves into the ice to analyze the echo. However, the stretch of the continent would pose a challenge as it even stretches farther than Europe. Hence, the use of already gathered data, such as existing satellite images of the surface, to trace out valleys and ridges that lay more than 1.6 miles below. When the results of the radio echo sounding experiment returned, it was found that there was a river-carved landscape of swooping valleys and highly peaked hills similar to some other parts of the Earth's surface. It seemed like a mountain view that looked comparable to Snowdonia in northern Wales. Being hidden under an unexplainable amount of ice, it is quite impossible to decipher the last sunlight that had touched it. Although the researchers are quite confident that it is about 14 million years ago, Professor Jameson believes that it goes beyond that to about 34 million years when Antarctica first froze over. Another team of which Craig Stevens, a physical oceanographer at the National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research in New Zealand, had been part, was sent to check and probe the area, had reportedly come back with evidence of life there. The team was caught off guard, as they did not expect any source of life beyond the surface of the ice, thus bringing them to the conclusion that there was a rather small ecosystem below. Although they had quite suspected life underneath the ice, discovering it seemed like they had been let into an icy secret. The scientists will continue to study the ecosystem to decipher how the water beneath was able to sustain life in the abundance that lives there, although they worry that a hidden ecosystem such as this may be at risk of rapidly warming temperatures caused by climate change. Therefore, both inside the cave and below the ice, there are lots of surprises that still await us. This seems to be a new beginning of all that we would hear concerning Antarctica. With the ongoing research and findings, it seems as though in a short while, more news will be open to us all. Of all the current findings, what surprised you the most? Do well to share in the comments section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as you await the next video.